Right, we're going to be looking at plant tissues and eventually at organs. We've just finished looking at cells. Uh, so here you can see this is a plant cell, nucleus, uh, ER, Golgi body, chloroplasts, vacuole in the middle. So we've looked at cells and cell organelles and now we're moving up one level of organization to talk about tissues. And then we'll move on to look at organs, organ systems and organisms with an eye please. So what is a tissue? It's not a thing you blow your nose on. In order to understand what a tissue is, we need to first understand what an organ is. So these are plant organs. Here we have a root with the stem, branches, leaves, flowers, and if there was fruit, fruit as well. Those are the organs of the plant. Tissues are simply cells that have differentiated. So if you remember when we were looking at cells, we spoke about mitosis and cells dividing through mitosis. And when they divide, they are very small. And those very small cells then differentiate. They become different. They specialize as they mature and they get bigger. So when you have a group of differentiated and specialized cells, if they look like each other and they perform the same function as each other, then we call them a tissue because they're working together. When you have a whole lot of tissues, different types of tissues, and they are working together, then they form an organ. Organs obviously work together in organ systems, and an organism is made up from different organ systems. Now, I'm not expecting you to be able to identify uh, what these are, but this is just to show you different types of tissues working together in an organ system. So you can see that all of these cells here look very similar. They've all got these stained red dots in them. You can see that in this red ring, those cells all look the same. These ones in the middle that form this X shape, they all look the same. And these ones here and here and here, they all look the same. So those are your different tissues. Now when we talk about tissues, there is a, a way in which we classify them. This is a mind map showing you an overview of how we classify plant tissues. It's a good idea to pause the video at this point and to copy down this mind map on a landscape page in the center, uh, maybe spread it out a bit so that you can then annotate around it. Uh, alternatively, you could turn this into a table and add all of your information on structure, function, and location for each of these different types, and then continue the video when you are ready to make your notes. So the first group that we're going to look at is going to be the meristematic tissue. Then we will talk about your permanent tissues, of which there are three groups. Epithelial, ground, also known as simple, and vascular, also known as complex. All right, meristematic. You can see that meristematic is made up of meristem, and in the middle is stem. Uh, you may well have heard of stem cells when we talk about animal tissues and, and animals. So stem cells in animals and meristem cells in plants are the same thing. They are undifferentiated small cells, and their function is to just divide. So they do mitosis all the time, creating new cells for the organism, and those new cells will then later on differentiate. So where does growth take place? Growth takes place in a plant, in the tips of shoots and roots, and because it's the tip, we say apical, which means apex, or the tip, as well as in the sides of shoots, in which case we call it lateral. Okay, so you've got apical and lateral meristems. So if you have a look here, this is a schematic of a plant. Apical would occur at the very top and at the very bottom down here. So this is root apex and shoot apex. You also have these buds here. Those are lateral buds. Those also contain uh, apical meristem. Uh, they are also the tip, it's the tip of the bud, so those are also apical meristems. But usually when we refer to apical meristem, we're referring to the buds at the very top or the very bottom of the roots. Then throughout the stem and throughout branches, you have these lateral meristems. So the function of your apical meristem obviously is growth upwards and downwards, so the lengthening of the plant, and the lateral meristems are what... Uh, widen the plant, they give the plant greater girth, uh, girth being, being the widening of the plant. 
So if you think of the giant redwoods in California, they are so wide, they have such a large girth that it takes 10 to 12 people to stand around holding hands to be able to get around the stem. And obviously those giant redwoods started out as a seed, which then sprouted and at some point must have been thinner than your finger. If we look at micrographs of this sort of thing, so here we have our terminal bud. See, there's the axillary bud. So a terminal bud and our roots down the bottom. So that terminal bud, this is what it looks like under a micrograph. You can see it has these sort of primordial leaves, okay, starting out leaves, beginning leaves. And all of this that is purple, okay, all of this purple stained tissue, that is all uh, meristematic tissue. You can see by comparison, these cells here, they appear quite kind of empty. And that's because they are physically much, much bigger. On the next slide, I'll show you a zoomed in uh, version, a uh, magnified version of this particular slide. And you can see those purple cells up at the top are very, very small uh, and very, very dense cytoplasm. Likewise with the uh, root apex, the root cap, again, you can see the purple down the bottom here where they've been densely stained. These cells divide, 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 divide. Uh, there particularly, you can see lots of little cells, dense cytoplasm, very small cells, very large nuclei. Okay? All the purple stuff is actually the nuclei, which have stained purple. Um, sorry, the, the root cap protects the Mary stem that lies underneath it. Um, this root cap, the purpose of that root cap, we, we're going off topic a little bit, but just to inform you, the purpose of the root cap, this these cells will actually be worn off through friction as that root is growing. And so their function is just protection of the Mary stem that sits underneath it. And here you can make out the lateral Mary stem. Obviously all across here it appears a little bit purple. That's because uh, a micrograph is actually a slice in 3D. Uh, so you're actually looking through to the back of the root where this Mary stem obviously sits in a cone right around the, the root. Okay, it goes right around, this is the half of it, and then would come out of the slide uh, around the front, connecting those two points. Okay, you can see the lateral Mary stem there. All right, so that's why it appears purple all the way across. It isn't actually purple all the way through. It's just a layer of purple. It's sort of, if you look at it from above, it looks like a circle. Okay, so that's your Mary stem there. When we talk about lateral Mary stem, there are two types of lateral Mary stem. The first one is the cork cambium, which sits just underneath the bark, and its function is to produce the bark. And then you have the vascular cambium sitting on the inside, and the function of the vascular cambium is to produce the vascular tissue, which is the xylem and the phloem. And it's as the xylem grows that the plant actually gets bigger, uh, its girth increases. So this is the zoomed in version. So here you can see your apical meristem. Okay, this is the primordial leaf, and again, you've got a bit of meristematic tissue there. Lots of meristematic tissue in the lateral branches as well. Don't get confused between lateral buds and lateral meristem. Lateral just means on the sides. 